Hello friends, today we are going to learn about, the, about moving objects in 3ds Max. This is Gökçe from CGK, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. Okay, to start, let's maximize the perspective viewport. Let's create a box and set the values to 10 by 10 by 80. I want you to move the box to the origin and we have our box, okay? To get into the move command, you can just hit W from the keyboard. Usually, uh, when you just opened up Max, you are in the select objects command uh, tool. Uh, these are called tools actually, not commands. Uh, usually, when Max starts, uh, you are in the select object tool. And uh, to get into the move tool, you can hit W from the keyboard. As you can see, it writes down in the parentheses as well. Uh, or you can just click on this move, uh, select and move tool. Okay. We have three X size as you can see, X, Y and Z, red, green and blue. And you can uh, click and hold on these X size and move the object accordingly. Okay, you can just move the object in the X axis, Y axis or Z axis. And you can just click, right click on these spinners to move it back to the origin. And also you can use these boxes in between these X size. You can just Click on this to move the object in the Z and X axis. As you can see, the yellow highlighted X size are the ones we are moving in uh, or moving on. Uh, we can use this box to or this uh, square to move the object uh, in Y and Z axis. Or you can use this square to move the object in X and Y uh, plane. And again, I can right click on this to move the object back to the origin. You don't need to move the object back to the origin. You don't need to exactly place the object to the origin. These are not just strict rules, but it's good practice to know where the object is all the time. Okay. You will see that in more complex scenes, this will come in handy, but we will talk about it in depth lessons. The last option in the move tool uh, is this little square in the pivot point uh, of the object okay we will talk about what pivot point is and how we can change it uh, in later lessons but for now you can know that the object is identified by this pivot point okay the position of the object means the position of this pivot point uh, it's usually on the uh, bottom uh, center point uh, of a primitive or a newly created uh, object uh, and for this box that's the case uh, whatever this little square uh, in the pivot point. This one moves the object uh, perpendicular to your viewport. Okay, uh, This is uh, more and more popular with sculpting uh, options. So 3ds Max uh, didn't have it uh, in the past but now they have it as well. You can move the object perpendicular to your view uh, point of view. You can see it in these other quad views. You can It moves in all three X size. Okay? Uh, depending on where I'm looking at. Okay, if I look at this from the top view, this will move the object in the X and Y plane. Okay, as you can see, it doesn't move that much up and down. Um, okay, so you can maybe understand that uh, more easily from these orthographic views. Okay, now these three are visual options for move. You can type in numbers as well. Let's say I want to move this box 50 units in the Y axis. Okay, I can just come in here and type in 50, hit enter and this box is moved 50 units in the y-axis. You can also right click on the move uh, tool and you have these absolute and offset worlds. You can again just type in 50 in the y-axis and you can uh, move the object 50 to 50 in the y-axis. Okay, And the difference between offset world and the absolute world is you can also access the offset world from here. This is the offset world, this is the absolute world, or you can access it from here. I will usually do it under here, but for now, educational purposes, I guess showing uh, you like this is better. Uh, I will right click on the y-axis to move it to the back to the origin. Now, the thing is, offset world um, counts the current position of the object okay if i move this uh, 50 units in the y axis as you can see in offset world the object is at the origin because the uh, for the offset world the pivot point or the base point is always the object itself 
So if I write down 15 here, it will move 50 in the y-axis um, and it will add the value to the offset world, as you can see. If I just type in 30, it should write 130, right? It will add 30 to the current position, okay? If I just type in minus 30, it will subtract 30 from the current position, right? I can change it uh, for x or in the z-axis as well, right? I can, maybe I should minimize this viewport for you to see better. Yeah. Now I can just, again, minus 100, for example, it will put it back to the ground. Uh, let's say this grid is ground for now. Uh, we don't have any models, but uh, let's say, let's imagine it is the ground. Offset world adds to the absolute uh, world, but absolute world is like, if you type in 50, now if you ty if type in 50 again, it's always at the 50 in the uh, Y position. If this is a little bit confusing, don't worry about it because in 3ds Max we don't usually use the uh, coordinate systems because we usually move objects according to uh, the other objects, right? So we will use like things like snap or align. Uh, the snap is here and align is here, and this will uh, be much much easier uh, to put objects in exact locations. Uh, let's do an example for. Uh, about this because the, in the other lesson, the next lesson, I will show you a our first model, a simple chair. But for now, let's create, uh, let's just dive in uh, to these comments. I want to create a box and I want to change the uh, values or the dimensions to 50 by 100 by 6. Okay, or maybe let's change it to 3. Let's say this is our. Uh, this is a cupboard and this is one of the uh, this is one of the shelves of the uh, cupboard i can move this to the origin you don't need to again as i told you be, usually this won't be at the origin right because we have a lot of objects in the scene already we can't put all the objects to the origin so uh, usually it won't be but for now let's bear uh, with this example i can just create a teapot let's say we want to put this teapot on top of the uh, shelf Okay, I can just move this to the origin first and type in 6 for the z-axis and now I have this. Oops. Yeah, we, we have changed that to 3, right? Uh, I can move this to 3 in the z-axis and I have this teapot on top of this one. But usually the problem will be like this. This will be in a random position and you want to you will want to put this on top of this and you can't just select this copy all these in here you can do that but it's it will take a lot of time you you can't be a modeler like that right you can't model everything and race with other molders this is not the way to do it the, uh, there should be a much uh, faster way to do this and i will show you what that is let's say we want to align this i will select the teapot i will hit align select the shelf and as you can see, it will put the teapot like in the uh, center point. I will I will grab the center point of the teapot, put it at the center point of the shelf in the X, Y and Z axis. And when I hit OK, as you can see, it's already at the center point. When I align it again, I can just uh, tell Max to put the Z position, the minimum Z position of the object to the maximum Z position of the shelf and then Voila, I have the uh, teapot centered on the shelf, right? Okay, if I want to move this back to the origin, let's delete the shelf for now. I want to play with the teapot a little bit more. I want to show you one more thing. Uh, in With all the transform tools, uh, by the way, by transform tools, I mean move, rotate, and scale. Okay, we have three main transform tools. We have some other, but these are three main tools. Actually, let's say for select, move, rotate, and scale. But move, rotate, and scale also contains select. So you don't need to usually select it, but sometimes we will use this. I will talk about uh, why. Uh, Q is the shortcut for select. W is the shortcut for move. E is the shortcut for rotate. And R is the shortcut for scale. You can you may ask that R is not the first letter of scale. So why R is the shortcut for scale? If you just look at your keyboard Q, W, E, and R, they are all side by side, and this is a really easy way to use these three transform transform tools W, E, R. So uh, this is an efficient way. Trust me, it it has been like 
years and it still is one of the most efficient ways to model, I guess. And uh, as I told you, for each of these transform tools, you can do this, what I'm showing you. You can hold shift and drag the object in one axis and it will create a copy of the object. For now, let's leave the option in copy and I will hit OK. And you can see that we have two copies of the teapot. You can select both of these. You can do that with a uh, window like this. Uh, I will just click and drag on an empty space and contain all uh, these two objects. Or you can just hold control and click on the other object. Click, hold control, click on the other object and this will add to the selection. And this way you can hold shift and create copies of these two. Again, another copy. I will select all of these, create three copy or two copies and I can select all of these hold uh, move them in the z-axis holding shift and I can just type in five for example and create five copies in the z-axis okay just try this out just for fun uh, we are not doing anything like strict right now we're just having fun with the software try to just get used to things just move them around type in stuff see if uh, max re responds you the way you think it will respond and try to understand if it doesn't try to understand why it doesn't okay you can just drop any comments or any questions in the uh, comments below so I hope this tutorial was helpful to you guys um, thumbs up if you like this video subscribe to our channel for new lessons and see you on the next lesson